Until showtime. We are live. to go this morning it's monday morning mindfulness and we made it y'all somebody didn't make it this morning and it wasn't us today's tribute is to the one and only iconic legendary hmm. we miss granny already cicely tyson yeah cicely made her transition 96 years young Oh, I gotta call in. That might help, huh? That might help. I do need to call in. Uh, yeah, we go live in ten minutes, y'all. Please hold and you'll be able to listen to the show. Oh, I, I got some information here that's going to blow your mind. As soon as I can uh, end the page. Find my intro. getting information ready for you here and We are at 9.86 on YouTube for uh, viewers and we need a thousand to help the Higher Learning Network use media program. Oh, 
what we need you to do right now. We need you to go to YouTube right now and type in Higher Learning TV Show. And when you see this logo, you see that logo right there? You'll know you're at the right place. And that way, we can get our thousand. But I need you to do it, so I need you to help. We need you to help. You know, we talk about our kids, but what are we doing to help? Let's talk about me. Come on. Come on. So that's what you can do right now while you're watching me. Just pick up the phone. You have a five minutes. And oh, Lionel will be joining us today too. Lionel Abdul Fox. What was the name of the movie, uh, Lionel? Oh, what did I do is look at Lil. What's the name of the movie? We're doing a movie review, The Phantom Menace. heard of the Phantom Menace. Where's my camera? Grand Rising, thank you for joining me today. Zelda Speaks, the Mindfulness Stress Relief Coach here uh, at the um, studio of the blogtalkradio.com, the female solution. Be sure and join me this morning, 7 till 9 a.m. Central Standard Time as we honor and celebrate the life and legacy of our very own Cicely Tyson, who made her transition this past Thursday. She was 96 years young and left us all with a hole in our heart. Be sure and uh, check out the dedication that we did at youtube.com, Higher Learning TV Show. And please subscribe while you're there because we're almost there. We need a thousand. We're at 9 to 6. So please join us at 7 to 9 a.m. Central uh, Standard Time. And we're on Clubhouse, too, and facebook.com, HLN TV Show, and Zelda Speaks. Thanks for joining us. Make it a great day. Shalom. Namaste. Peace. Why do I not hear anything? Says I'm connected. Okay. Well, I just don't know why I don't hear anything. Oh, probably because I got the volume down. Duh. Okay. One minute until showtime. One minute until
Your shoe will be in five seconds. Three, two, one. Last talk radio. Women have the power to transform this world. We can end crime and violence if we all agree to do one thing. Share. Let's share our wisdom, share our time, share our talent, share our finances, but most of all, let's share our love. This is the Female Solution. Join me, Naima Latif, every morning at 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Central Standard Time as we bring you stimulating discussions about the issues affecting our lives. If you're listening online at www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash the dash female dash solution, Click the blue button that says follow and get our daily topics every morning directly to your email and your smartphone. Hi, I'm Naima Latif, executive producer of the Female Solution Radio Show. We invite you to call in 515-605-9325 and participate in this daily think tank as we examine the challenges we face and develop solutions that restore peace and harmony. We are global transformers, changing the world from the way it is to the way it should be. We are one. Wherever we live on this earth, we are one human family. On behalf of our team of radio hosts, I'd like to extend a greeting to all the members of our family, whenever and wherever you may be listening around the world. To our family in China. Ni hao. In India. Namaste. In Japan, Konnichiwa. In Korea, Anihasa. In Russia, Zrastut. In Germany, Guten Tag. Guten Tag. In Poland, Dzień Dobry. Dzień Dobry. In France, Bonjour. Bonjour. In Spain, Hola. Hola. In Italy, Ciao. Ciao. In Egypt, Asen Masata. Asen Masata. In Ghana, Akwaba. Akwaba. In Nigeria, Peleo. Peleo. In South Africa, Saobona. Saobona. In Senegal. In Kenya, Jambo. Jambo. In Israel, Shalom. In Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Saudi Arabia, <coughs> Assalamu alaikum. Greetings, and may peace be upon you all. Assalamu alaikum. Is Monday morning a struggle to get out of bed into the pool of things? Not alone. Join us for thought provoking, stimulating, and mindful conversations on Higher Morning with Delta Speed for your Monday morning mindfulness session on Blog Talk Radio. The female solution. Monday, 7 30 to 9 a.m. Be sure to send your ideas, thoughts, comments, and suggestions. Also, if you'd like to be a guest on the show, visit Delta Speed. Dot com. And send us your info. We'd love to have you. Experience mindfulness moments with the mindfulness flash stress relief coach. That was me. And thanks for sharing the mindfulness moments with us today. Stay on purpose. Stay empowered. And stay tuned to the next session of mindfulness on higher learning. That was me. We'll make it a mindful day. Thanks for listening. Good morning, everyone. Grand Rising, and thank you, and welcome to Monday Morning Mindfulness. I'm your host, Zelda Speaks on The Female Solution, and we are live on Facebook.com, HLN TV show, as well as Zelda Speaks. And let us keep in mind that YouTube.com need you today and i need you to go there right now and subscribe because we need a thousand and we're at 986 and you can make that happen so thank you for making that happen today happy earth day birthday born day today is the first monday of the month it is 2 1 20 21 and if you listen to the show last night uh Soul Purpose Healing with Viata, you will know that numbers play a great role 
in the course of your life. So you might want to check that show out and see how it can help improve the quality of your life because knowledge is power. So be sure and check out last night's show. Happy Earth Day, birthday, born day. If today is your birthday, your natal day, we are celebrating it with you because it is a blessing to be here because so many people did not make it today. And one of those people is the legendary, iconic actress, humanitarian, queen mother to us all, Cicely Tyson, who made her transition on Thursday. So we'll be celebrating her today. And I have a video that I'd like you to see that we did in honor of her, as well as, <clears throat> excuse me, reminding you to pray for the sick and the shut-in and the incarcerated and those who just don't have anybody, because there's a lot of mental anguish and frustration and fear going on right about now because we are we have tuned out the inner spirit of ourselves we are trusting that something that is outside of us instead of trusting our gut and it is causing us chaos and confusion so keep that in mind as you go about today my co-host today is Lionel Abdul Haq of Community Cultivations and he'll be joining us with a movie review of the Phantom Menace. I never even heard of it. Have you? Well, I hope you have, so we'll be able to discuss it. If you're listening online this morning, you'd like to join the conversation, feel free to call in at 515-605-9325, press one to speak. And also follow us on social media, Instagram at Zelda Speaks, the number two and the letter U. And we're also on, did I, what did I just say? Instagram, the letter, uh, the number two and the letter U. And we're also on uh, Clubhouse this morning. Uh, welcome, Fabian. Thank you for joining us this morning on Monday Morning Mindfulness. This is a club that is only available to those who have iPhones. Don't ask me why I don't make the rules. I'm just a member. Okay. So if you know somebody with an iPhone, you want to see what's going on on uh, social media on Clubhouse, then uh, tell them to ping you in when you get your uh, new iPhone. Be sure and check out my blog, zeldaspeaks.wordpress.com. And there's a tribute there to uh, Cicely Tyson as well. And if you are a person in pain, like I know you saw us doing the higher learning hip roll last week because my, my hip was killing me. And uh, I forgot to put on my Healy app. If you go to my site, you'll know what I'm talking about. Zelda.now.site. Zelda.now.site. That's for natural healing for pain and inflammation. And also for those of you who know that food is high and it's getting higher and you need to grow your own garden inside your apartment. I live in an apartment, so if I can do it, you can do it too. Go to ZeldaRobinson.TowerGarden.com. And be sure and check out ZeldaSpeaks.com. For my free download, Diabetic Donut, if you, uh, it's a PDF, how I reverse type 2 diabetes. So if I can do it, you can too. I'm sweating bricks in here. Got the light on and the heat. So, and then I'm drinking this hot tea. That doesn't help. Anyway, sweating is a good thing. As we take a look at our weather for today, as you already know, it is super cold today. Uh, Saturday and Sunday, it'll only be a minus three and a minus four. But the good news is the storm is over. And we will get it uh, up into the 30s today. So we'll look forward to that. Traffic and weather is sponsored by Karen Kelly of iText.com. This is a barter agency to see that allows you to use your products or services to sell them to others. And you can use barter dollars instead of cash. You can also travel with it. But you could got to use the word, the promo word. Uh, Z um, Zelda, thank you, Richard Pagee, in order to get that hundred dollars to go shopping immediately. As we take a look at the expressways on CTA and Metro, there are no reported delays, but on the Kennedy inbound, it's 18, 18 and 19 on the reverse. On the Edens inbound, it's 25 and 21 on the reverse. On the Eisenhower, a little more congestion. There's 25 minutes inbound and 21 on the reverse. There's a lingering delay from an earlier crash outbound on the Eisenhower. On the Stevenson inbound, 17, 18 on the reverse. On the Dan Ryan, there is a little inbound delay, 16 minutes <coughs> from Jane Byrne interchange, 15 minutes 
on the reverse at 47th Street, there's an outbound crash. So expect delays there in the express lane. And also that uh, accident at 63rd, that earlier crash has been cleared up. On the Bishop Ward and Lakeshore Drive, it's 11 minutes in both directions. And that's your traffic and weather sponsored by Karen Kelly of itex.com for entrepreneurs <coughs> and uh, business owners. If you have something that you would like to share, what I'd like to share with you right now is the tribute that I did for um, our iconic sister, Queen Mother, and that would be Cicely Tyson. And yesterday's conversation made me realize that not everyone knows about black history. So it is my responsibility to share that because I was shocked. So let us proceed. Can you see it? Nope, you cannot. Oh, okay. You can't see it. So let me start it over. Okay. And the reason why you can't see it is because I forgot to hit share screen. That might help, Zelda. Okay, here we go. Our tribute to the queen, her queen mother, Cicely Tyson. Enjoy. From Sounder to the Bountiful, the Autobiography of Ms. Jane Pittman. Cicely's convictions and grace have helped for us to see the dignity of every single beautiful member of the American family. And she's just gorgeous. <laughs> That's former President Barack Obama giving the Presidential Medal of Freedom to groundbreaking actress Cicely Tyson. Back in 2016, she told us in the interview last week, and she writes about in the book, she got a big kick when the president said that about her. She said, he said I was gorgeous. I go, a lot of people think that about you, Ms. Tyson. News of her death prompted an outpouring of tributes last night. Viola Davis and Regina King called Cicely Tyson a trailblazer for black women in show business. Tyson gave many memorable performances in Root, Sounder, and the trip to Bountiful which won her a Tony Award, by the way. She was 88 at the time. We spoke with Tyson last Thursday at the Abyssinian Baptist Church. That's in Harlem. That's her church home. And she talked about the obstacles that she's overcome, her dedication to acting, and discovering her calling. So here we sit in 2021. You still enjoy acting after yes. all of these years. Well, if I read a role that has something to say that I want to express, that it allows me to speak. And as a little girl, you this was painful to me to read. You didn't feel beautiful as a little girl. Oh, I know I wasn't because I was skinny. That's number one. Uh, and I was black. That was number two. And I was not beheaded. Okay. But then as life turns out, life has other plans for you. I was walking down Fifth Avenue and uh, uh, someone tapped me on the shoulder and said, uh, uh, who's your agent? And I said, agent for He said, you're a model, aren't you? Had you thought about modeling? You interested in modeling? No, I didn't know what modeling was. <laughs> <laughs> Inspired by that encounter on Fifth Avenue, Tyson enrolled in modeling school. And it wasn't long before her beauty and poise landed her in catalogs and magazine covers like Ebony. The journey to stardom was not an easy one for Tyson, who became pregnant when she was 17 and had a short marriage that lasted just over two years. Tyson began her acting career as a single mother, a choice that brought conflict at home. My mother, I don't know what she wanted me to be. She thought that I was going to live in a den of iniquity because we grew up in the slums. Okay, lots of prostitutes walking up and down the street. And that's all she knew about movies. But she changed her mind, didn't she? Yeah. Well, you know, the first thing I did was at the Y. I invited her. I went by stage to remove makeup and hair, and then I come out. My mother's standing at the door, 
with all these people around her congratulating her. And she said, yes, ever since she was a little girl, you know, she liked to sing and dance. Are you serious? <laughs> Tyson made her on-screen debut at 31 in the 1956 film Carob Gold. Shortly after that, she enrolled in an acting school run by Paul Mann, a well-known acting coach. She found herself alone with him after her first class. He said, excuse me, Miss Tyson, I'd like to talk to you. So I turned around and came back. And before I knew it, he pulled me down. And he was having, touching you and groping you? Yes. No, what he wanted me to do was something worse than that. I thought um, about the whole incident when I got home. And, um, you know, I never shed a tear about that until this moment. All these years later, it still affects you that way. Um, the whole thought that you could go out innocently uh, uh, to achieve something, and it turns out to be something so vulgar and coarse and, and demeaning to you as a young black woman. But I made up my mind then that I went there for a reason, and that reason had not changed. It sounds like a Me Too incident before we were even calling it Me Too. And yeah. some people would say, but why did you go back? Go and to and that you say, I went back to get what uh, I was. On uh, Zelda Robinson, excuse me, Zelda speaks that blog spot, excuse me. I change blogs and I keep saying the old one, but it's not the old one, it's the new one. It's Zelda Speaks dot WordPress dot com. And I'm gonna pull that up just so you can see it because I keep pulling up the wrong one. I mean, I keep saying the wrong one, I should say. So I'm going to pull that up for you right now just so that you can see it on the blog. And I am going to share that screen. So that way you know when you get to it, you'll know exactly what it is. And Queen Mother, there it is. So I'm going to share that with you so you can see it. So that's what my blog looks like. It's, it's Zelda Speaks dot wordpress.com and that's queen mother uh, cicely tyson so just wanted to share that with you so right about now we're going to do our monday morning mindfulness meditation because i kept getting all these calls you're doing all these dedication for these people who are pass on what about us we're still here it's like okay i hear you i hear you so as we begin the process this morning we're going to do monday morning mindfulness meditation and i think i found something that will garner gather our attention here and this has been on my mind for a while, ever since I saw a sister on Facebook. I can't remember her name, but it just resonated. These bowls, these sound bowls, it resonated with me. So I will be using a sound bowl this morning. Uh, it's an ancient Tibetan bowl, and they come this big, and I mean, they're huge. I, I, I got to find the sister's name and share that with you. I'll share it in my blog when I find it again because I found it on Facebook and it was just awesome. And it just put me in such a, a peace of mind. I just wanted to share that with you. So we'll begin the process of sitting up straight in our chair, nothing in our laps, nothing in our, in our mind, in our heart, mm -hmm. in our spirit, but that of the breath. And that is what we will focus on as we breathe in to the count of five, hold it and exhale. So we're gonna breathe through our nose and exhale through our nose as well. Inhale deeply. Hold it and then exhale. So let us begin the process sitting up straight. As we quiet our minds to pray, prepare to go within. Inhale deeply. Hold it and exhale. Once more, inhale deeply. Hold it and 
and exhale. And did I tell you, you should not be looking at me. You should, your eyes should be closed. You should only be looking at the inside of your eyelids. As we inhale deeply, hold it. And exhale. Giving thanks for the power of the breath. As we inhale deeply, hold it. And exhale. As we unplug from the system today, as we tune out all TV, radio, cell phones, we plug into the beginning of our existence that brought us here through the power of the breath. As we inhale deeply, hold it, and exhale. As we release just temporarily the system within, as we release the system without, that was art the artificial stimuli, TV, radio, cell phone, all of that. We, we let go and let our gut guide us to balance us, to bring out our natural gifts, talents, and abilities, not to be robots, to be, to be independent thinkers and trusting the gut by any means necessary. As we breathe in, and as we breathe out. And it doesn't matter if we are all breathing at the same breath. What matters is, is that we're breathing. And to know that th th this information through each breath that you receive, the information that you receive is from your highest power. Whatever you choose to call it, the universe, spirit, God, Allah, Jesus, Jehovah, Yudah, Allah, it does not matter. What matters is that you trust whatever it is that you call it. As you inhale deeply and exhale. And know that as you exhale, each and every breath that you take brings you closer and closer to that of which you truly desire to be, what you were desired to be. As we breathe in, and as we breathe out. This time as we breathe in, feeling that energy, bringing all of that energy from the breath to the top of the head, and then breathing in, and sending light and love and energy down through the face, the forehead, the cheeks, the chin, and the neck. Oh, put those hands up there and massage that neck because that neck needs it. That is where we hold much of our tension as we breathe in. And as we breathe out, bringing that energy back on down through the chest, the solar plexus, and the sides as we inhale deeply. Hold it. And exhale, bringing the energy on down through the hips, the buttocks, and the back, and the legs as we inhale deeply. And exhale, sending the energy on down through the knees. Yes, those lovely knees. Rub whatever part of your body is sending you a body message. We call it pain, but Dr. C.J. Mimi calls it body messages. So that's what I'm going to call it a body message as we inhale deeply, sending love and light and energy down through the legs and the ankles and the arches and the instep and the toes. Feel free to wiggle those toes. More love, light, and energy, sending that energy back up through the feet and through the legs and the knees and the thighs as we inhale deeply. And as we exhale, bringing love and light and energy back up through the buttocks and the back and the spine. As we inhale deeply. And exhale, bringing more light and love and energy back up through the back of the back, the back of the neck. Feel free to put your hands on the back of your neck and the back of the shoulders and rub that spine back of your neck 
and the shoulders, releasing the tension. That's that's cause that's where we hold all of the tension as we squeeze the back of the neck, the vagus nerve right there, just squeeze it and massage it. Tell it how much you love it and appreciate it because it'll love you right back by continuing to send love and light and energy through the breath. As we continue to inhale deeply, sending more love and light and energy back up through the back of the head to the top of the head. As we inhale deeply, And exhale. Once more, inhale deeply. And exhale. And just marinate in the thought that you and you alone are in control of your stress this day because you have the power of the breath at your disposal at any time, in any place. As we inhale deeply. And this time, as we exhale, bringing the head forward, chin to chest and rotate that head to the left and slowly bring it around to the back. Slow down, you're moving too fast. Slowly bringing it around to the right, slowly. Slowly, slowly bringing it back front and center. Head up, inhale deeply. And as you exhale, bring the head forward, chin to chest, slowly rotate the head to the right. Slowly, slowly bring it around to the back, slowly, slowly, slowly over to the left, slowly, slowly bringing it around to the front. Head up, inhale deeply. And exhale. Inhale deeply. Slowly turn your head to the left as far as you can, feeling a stretch in the right side of your neck. And bringing the head back to the front. Inhale deeply. And exhale, turning the head to the right as far as you possibly can, feeling the stretch in the left side of the neck. And bringing the head back forward. Let us take one more long, deep inhale together. Inhale deeply. Hold it. And as we exhale, sending love and light and energy to each and every organ of the, of the body, beginning with the brain. Oh, I love my brain. Say it out loud. Let the brain know you love it. You receive it. You care for it. You nourish it by giving it the oxygen you need as you breathe in. And as you breathe out, continuing to send light and love and energy down through your face, through your voice, through your pipes, through your heart, your liver, your lungs, and your chest. Oh yes, we give thanks for the heart. The heart that gives love is a heart that receives love. As we breathe in, and sending love and light and energy as we breathe out, giving thanks for the lungs. So many people have lung issues these days. We give thanks for the liver, the pancreas, send it love, the spleen, the spine the systems of the body that work tirelessly and we don't even know anything about it, beginning with the breath. As we breathe in, we give thanks for the digestive circulation and assimilation systems that keeps us moving, that keeps the system moving. And if your system is stuck as in constipated, Go to my website and find out how to unstick that bowel movement. Just get you some nopa later. It's at zeldaspeaks.wordpress.com. Inhale deeply. And as we take this last long deep breath, 
We give thanks for the powers that be that allowed us to be here this day as we celebrate Black history, knowing that it is Black people who invented everything. What? Inhale deeply. And exhale. Yeah, I know it's a shock to you, but you need to know the truth. I am so enamored with a book that I am reading, Investigating the Science of Self. It's called Black People Invented Everything. Not some things, everything. And you have got to get this book by Dr. Sujan Kumar Das, founder of the Solutionary Institute. Didn't we say we were solutionaries here on Monday Morning Mindfulness on the Female Solution? Yes, we did. And this is proof. But I have got to share this with you. I forgot to mention that in the course of your chaos during the course of the day, if people get in your face, you just simply stop breathing. Inhale deeply. And exhale. Because when you do that, they will look at you like you have lost your mind. But what that does is allow you to train yourself to catch yourself in the midst of stress and chaos and confusion when you start breathing. And if you got a little stank on your breath, like you forgot to brush your teeth or got a little garlic, a little onion, trust me, they will step away. So just remember that. And more tips are at my YouTube channel, Zelda Speaks. You'll see that. But I've got to get back to speaking on Dr. Sujan Kumar Das. Ugh, black people invented everything. I have a story to tell you about that, too. Um, I'll tell you about that later. But I, you must go to page 13. When I read this from page 13. Well, first of all, let me preface it with uh, the, the, inventory, the table of contents. It talks about the introduction. Black people made America in a short guide. Let's, let me tell you about the deep history. Black people invented transportation. Black people invented style. Well, we already know that. We invented surgery. Did you know that? I did not know that. We invented music. We know that. We see that. Our music is everywhere. We invented cuisine. Black people invented housing. Animals. Medicine. Oh my God. Page 116 talks about medicine. This book is blowing me away and it'll blow you away too. Black people invented farming, education, art, manufacturing, mining, metalworking. Black people invented government. <laughs> well, what happened? Well, that's another story. Well, we're getting close to it. Kamala's in the White House. Black people invented business, language, invented sports invented weapons oh my god this this book is how many pages almost 300 pages it's worth it's worth it um, but i lost my page i wanted to share with you something that really blew me away it says beginning in the 1970s dr shirley jackson experiments with theoretical physics Physics paved the way for modern telecommunications, including touch tone dialing, the portable fax, caller ID I knew about, call waiting I knew about, some sisters uh, in, the, in the south suburbs, northern suburbs, and the fiber optic cable. Without Dr. Jackson, we'd be far from 5G. Meanwhile, black mathematicians like Katherine Johnson, Dorothy Vaughn, and Mary Jackson pushed the world forward. Without Otis Boykin, there would be no IBM, and thus no personal computers or Macs. Without Mark Dean, and this I know for sure, because I've met Mark Dean at uh, when I was speaking some years ago at an engineer's conference. Mark Dean is an engineer. Mark Dean, without Mark Dean, those PCs wouldn't have an LCD monitor. The kind used today in voice over internet protocol is called VoIP. B-O-I-P, which was first developed by Marion Croak. Without Lisa Golobtor, G-O-L-E-B-T-O-R, there would be no animated GIFs, <clears throat> shockwaves, or Hulu. Who knew? Hulu. Who knew? Well, now you know. We should know these stories. Why don't we? As Neil deGrasse Tyson said, it 
if the only time you think of me as a scientist during Black History Month, then I must not be doing my job as a scientist. Well, now you know, and you have no excuse. I mean everything. Black people just admitted everything. You have just, you've got to get this book. Do yourself a favor. And that's why I'm buying my girlfriend a book. I have a Jewish girlfriend, and I was telling her about it yesterday. Uh, that I was doing the dedication to Cicely Tyson this morning. She says, who's Cicely Tyson? And I was like, oh my God, I got work to do. So I'm like the, the the scientist in this book said, if you don't know who that is, I'm not doing my job. So I got some work to do and I, and, and excuse me, uh, you have some work to do as well. And what we're going to do right now is take a co quick commercial break. And when we come back, we'll be joined by Brother Lionel abdul Hop of Community Cultivations. And we will be discussing... The movie, I wrote it down here somewhere because I haven't seen the movie, and it's called The Phantom Mansion. I hope I wrote that right. Can't even read my own hand, own hand right. <laughs> that's, that's, that's sad, isn't it? Anyway, it's 7.35. I'm going to a uh, quick uh, commercial break so we can pay the bills. In the meantime, I need you to go to YouTube and subscribe to the Higher Learning TV show. Not the, it's youtube.com, Higher Learning TV Show. Because we're at 986 and we need a 1,000 uh, viewers. So please do that now and we'll be right back right here on the Female Solution. You're tuned in to the Soulful Chicago Book Fair 2020 Vision for Women. That's right. You can support the vision of reviving black literary excellence in the city by simply taking your $20 or more and donating it on our website. Visit www.socialchicagobookfair.com and click the donate tab on our homepage. So just call at 646 and we welcome you to helping us bring literary life into the south side of Chicago. We all say we would like to be wealthy, but wealth isn't determined by how much money you have. Wealth is determined by your power to define what money is. The dictionary defines money as something used as a way to pay for goods and services and to pay people for their work. So how would you like to have access to an unlimited source of money? Money that is not taxed by the government. Money that increases as you share the opportunity with others. Money that you can use to pay for goods and services and pay people for their work. I'm talking about Bitcoin. It's the future of independent wealth building. Bitcoin is the new money that you control. Get started building your wealth. Call 312-849-3456.
Grand Rising, and thank you for joining us back here on Monday Morning Mindfulness. Hi, Alana Griselda to speaks. Um, Female Solution, thank you so much for joining us. Be sure and join us tomorrow with a brand new host. My sister from the microphone would be Jody Susan of Susan Essentials. The name of the show is called Self Cell Care. Interesting, isn't it? C E L L. Self Cell Care. Not your cell phone. Mm -mm. It's another kind of cell, the cell within. Remember in meditation this morning, we were talking about the self, taking care of the self. So that's what Jody will be talking about self cell care. So be sure and join us tomorrow morning, 7 till 9 a.m., as we kick off and congratulate. Our new sister of the microphone, Jody Susan of Susan Essentials. And uh, I will post some information on my um, blog today on zeldaspeaks.wordpress.com. You can go there now and see the rest of the video, the tribute that I did to our beloved queen mother who has transitioned. She is in flight. She should be there by now. Uh, she made her transition as we are celebrating, celebrating Black History Month. And tomorrow we will be, and excuse me, Wednesday we'll have Naima Latif and Kareem Hamid repairing family relationships. Thursday, Women's Roundtable and Friday, Health and Wellness with Beata. Saturdays we have rotating hosts. First Saturday, nonviolent communication with Jana from London, England. That's our foreign correspondent. Second Saturday, Black Taboo with Love Join Powers. The third Saturday, Travel with Deborah. And on fourth Saturday, our very own Wisdom with Mama D. And on Sunday, Soul Purpose Healing with B. Atta. If you didn't hear the show last night, you can go back. It's always in the archives. All of the shows are in the archives. And it is time for us to go to the phone. If you'd like to join the conversation, 515-605-9325. And remember, you must press one to speak. Otherwise, we cannot hear you. So as we go to the phone line, 773-642, we bring to the table our very own co-host. That would be Lionel abdul Haq of Community Cultivations. Welcome to the conversation, Lionel. Thank you for joining us this morning. Peace be upon you. Thank you, thank you once again for the opportunity to share with uh, our listening audience. And a happy Black History Month to everyone. And I hope uh, you know, we all learn, uh, realize that um, even while we don't know a lot of the things that you were quoting about from that book, because Black History has been willfully and deliberately in. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, there's a reason for that. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't want us to know who we are and uh, the whole concept of white supremacy would be shattered if we did. And that's the that's the uh, you know what we need to really focus on. Uh, the reality that this is not by accident, it's by design. And then much of the problems that we have are the direct result of that willful, deliberate effort to hide uh, the truth. And the truth will set you free. Amen. Well, it is no longer hidden. The truth has been revealed. Yeah, I think it's out here, but everybody don't know it. And most no. people have gotten to the point where knowledge is not something that they look for. Mm. They want to have fun. Mm. They want to have fun. Mm. And knowledge, knowledge is not consistent with much of what we consider to be fun. Mm. No. If it's not fun, it's not for this one. And that is the kind of thinking that keeps us stuck, that keeps us in a place that we don't want to be longer than we want to be there. So how do we move beyond that? How do we move beyond accepting what they've told us and the truth? How do we move beyond that? I think we begin by breaking the habit. Mm. You know, um, the habit of foolish behavior 
uh, is a double uh, dose. Mm. He, uh, he locks us in physically, uh, mechanically, uh, to to the, to the mindset that has been given us. That once you actually start to practice uh, the behavior that drives direct you to, then not only do you it's not enough just to have the information. You have to break the habits that you have formed over the years of practicing the foolishness. Mm. Because if you don't, it's like cigarettes. You know, people can't quit smoking cigarettes, not because they don't know that it's harmful, not that they don't know that they've been misled into smoking in the first place, mm -hmm. but the habit of just taking one out and lighting it up mm -hmm. is, a, is a physical, psychological barrier mm -hmm. that has to be overcome. You have to consider that also in the, the process of quitting smoking. Mm -hmm. You have to break the habits of blowing smoke out your nose. <laughs> you, know. you know what? You are absolutely right. You're absolutely right, Lionel, because I was a smoker. I smoked for 10 years, and I thought it was the hardest thing on the planet to do after I stopped, especially when I was working in an environment where everybody smoked. That is really hard to do. So I say, if you can quit smoking, you can you can, you can quit doing anything. Because smoking has what over when I was smoking, it had what four hundred chemicals. It has over nine hundred chemicals in it. So your body is addicted. Thank you, son, for coming up. I appreciate that, even though it's cold outside. Thank you, son. I appreciate you. Can't see, but that's okay. <laughs> that's a, that's it. What you said. It's not only a mindset. It's a phys physiological hurdle that you've got to overcome because you've got over 900 chemicals in your body over 899 you can't even pronounce most of them and they've got they're running havoc in your system and you don't even know it and you wonder why you go to reach to grab for that nicotine because it's like you said lionel it's physical and it's psychological and how do we move beyond that? Go ahead. It's, it's, it's universal. It's universal. Yeah, the idea yes. of slavery is not just psychological, mm -hmm. but it's physical. Yes. The environment perpetuates the idea of white supremacy because most of the things that we see are projected in a way that tells us the white folks are superior. Mm -hmm. And so the physiological reality reinforces the psychological. Mm. Mm. You can't you can't get to the psychological until you break the physical. Mm. You break free from the physical. Mm. So we got a lot of work to do, but the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. And we have to make uh, conscious efforts to undo what has been done. Yes, we do. And on a consistent basis, on a continuous basis. It's like you've got to stand on guard at the door of your mind, body, and spirit to protect it. Because there is someone out here. There's a whole universe out here that is trained, for lack of a better word, to keep you in the state of consciousness that you are in. And that is the station of uh, 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 frivolity, of having fun, of getting to the well, next. The whole universe. The whole universe is like that. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, it's just the, the, the world that is controlled by the power, the so-called power of that be. The universe actually speaks a totally different message. Yes, the yes. The universe speaks the truth. Yes, the thank you. The universe speaks of a greater reality than materialism and fun, fun, fun. 
Yes. Uh, definitely without that. So the universe speaks a message of work, consistency. Um, um, you know, that, that's what the universe speaks. Mm -hmm. We've been turned off to the universe mm -hmm. and locked into a false reality mm -hmm. that is manufactured and maintained mm. through uh, what we call the phantom minutes. Mm. The Phantom Men. This is, uh, this is uh, a good introduction to our subject. Um, the, the, the Star Wars Star Wars series um, that had begun in the seventies uh, with the end, the last with the ending of the sec segments, and then began. In the 90s or you know, 2000, with uh, the beginning series uh, that started with the Phantom Minutes, the movie The Phantom Minutes, and this is uh, at the really this is this speaks volumes about the issue of slavery, about the issue of um, miseducation, and. Uh, the subject that we're discussing uh, with regard to the problems that confront us as a people, as a human, human society, is based on the judgment mm -hmm. that is coming as, at this particular time in history that is, uh, is going to force us to change. One way or another, we're going to change. I 
revival, the second coming of Elvis, the entire Western world is hyped to the max. Long lines of baby boomers and Generation Xers camped out at the theaters days ahead of the scheduled opening of the Phantom Minutes. Listing costumes of their favorite characters, news interviews with these fanatics revealed the phenomenal scope of their social economic diversity. Professionals from the most prestigious firms and corporations in the world spoke of an overwhelming compulsion to be there, camped out, and to bring their children in order to share in the experience. Mm. Indeed, the power of movies as part of a comprehensive system of image making, trend setting, marketing, distribution, and licensing is overwhelming, contributing to the extraordinary force of this saga is the timing, the timing of its release. The new millennium of the 21st century was generating quite a stir of fanatical activity of its own during the last quarter, the holiday season of the 20th century. For people of faith and many social political sciences as well, the significance of this time in human history is tremendous. Quote, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. End quote. It is our contention that the pervasive religious orientation called Christianity and its impact on the commercial, economic well-being of the best of Western civilization. The global gold rush for mastery of computer technology and the immeasurable influence of mass media programming upon moral attitudes and morale form a trinity and a trilogy that is in truth the Phantom Menace. Mm. The fundamental lessons of theology, that is, the study of, of God as a social <coughs> ideal for the past 6,000 years of recorded history, are obvious and intricately characterized in these movies. Mm. Specifically and most notably, the principal characters of Luke Skywalker and his illustrious father, Anarchy. Both of whom earn imminent distinction as members of, of an extraordinary alumni of men called Jedi Knights. These characters parallel in the context of scripture the lives of devoted servants of the one God Allah called the Force in this mm. series. Mm. The consistency of this series characters and the theme and theme with the scriptural teachings about the creation of evil and the fall of man metaphorically cast anarchy in the image of Lucifer or Iblis and Luke in the character of and other other Jedi in the character of Abraham, Moses, Jesus and Muhammad upon them in both Christian and Islamic scriptures, that is the Bible and Holy Quran, there is a metaphor of a rebellion against the will or judgment of the Lord God. Lucifer is characterized as being a leader among the angels or servants of the Lord God who is offended in order to take a subordinate position or ranking to a mortal character called Adam. The Quran offers more detail on the subject, saying that he was too proud, vainglorious, too high and mighty to submit to something fashioned out of dust or mud. 
at the root of the name anar anarchist is the na is the noun anarchy. This word means, according to Webster's dictionary, the absence of governmental authority, a state of lawlessness or political disorder due to the absence of governmental authority. Thus, anarchy who grows up to become the dreaded God Vader in this second trilogy series of movies begins an apprenticeship as a Jedi Knight in defiance of a governmental authority. It is interesting to note the universal makeup of the Jedi Council in contrast to the good old boy crop of Jedi in both cities, including those on the so-called dark side of the force. Further, and perhaps more significant, is the arbitrary role of Jedi Knights and the fear invoked by the order to kill them. For the principal weapon of a Jedi Knight and those who cross over to the dark side is called a light saber. Mm. Thinkers, philosophers, and visionaries have studied and written that knowledge is power. Scripture best conveys the message where it says in the Bible, in the beginning was the word, and let there be light. In the Holy Quran, it reads, when Allah God created the universe, he said, be, and it is. Knowledge is the food that strengthens our will, which is the, is the essence and eternal nature of life. It is when we submit our will, strengthened by worldly knowledge, to the will of Allah God, and feed upon his inspirational knowledge, or uh, we then made in the image and likeness of Allah God in terms of the strength of our will. So just as the servants of Allah God sent to establish justice and keep the peace were confident and courageous men with superior miraculous divine power, so too did the Jedi who submit their wills to that of the force. Those on the dark side have the right to say that that is red, while their counterparts on the, the pre presumably light side use the right saber that is green. In the interest of time and space, let it suffice to say the green symbolizes the universal will of Allah God for growth, peace, and progress. Red, on the other hand, represents light without heat or knowledge applied without compassion. In my conclusion, mm -hmm. the word mm -hmm. phantom is of particular significance to understanding the phenomenal impact and scope of this movie and indeed the entire city. Webster defines phantom as something believed to exist but having no substantive or tangible evidence thereof. Mm. The key words in this definition are substantive and tangible, for they clearly contain the scope of the issue to the realm of materialism. Thus, the lack of governmental authority and indeed the behavior, the behavior of disbelief in the very existence of the law God it is profoundly illustrated in this series. Through the pervasive and overwhelming orientation of a carnal, superficial, and sensation sick culture, such immaterial ideals as faith in Allah God, charity, abstinence, and upright character, and strong, courageous will are severely undermined and aborted. Mm. Quote, your guardian Lord is Allah, the one God who created the heavens and the earth in six mm. days. Then he established himself on the throne of authority. Allah God draws the night and a veil over the day. Each 
speaking to each other in rapid succession. Allah, the one God, created the sun and the moon and the stars. Okay. All governed by his laws under his command. Is it not then for Allah, the one God, to create and to govern? Bless be Allah, the cherisher and the sustainer of the universe. Ooh. Wow. That's the review that I did. And that was one of my best, I think. <laughs> uh, I'm really, uh, I'm really, uh, blessed here. Wow. That was powerful. It makes you think. I never looked at it from that perspective. So, wow, especially when you said image setting and the marketing and the mass distribution. You got people lined up at 6 o'clock in the morning to go to a um, a Star Wars convention, a convention. And I just never could understand what all the hoopla was all about. But we'll talk a little bit more about that when we come back from our break. If you're listening online, you want to join the conversation, 515-605-9325. Press 1 to speak. That is our co-host, Lionel abdul Hawk of Community Cultivations. And we're discussing Black History this month. Today is February 1st, the first day of Black History Month and Black History Year, as far as I'm concerned, because when we started the show, remember I told you about the book, Black People Invented Everything, everything, not some things, everything. You got to get this book. Uh, Dr. Sujan Kumar Das, founder of the Solutionary Institute, where we always say here on the Female Solution that we are solutionaries. Yes, we are. And we have you to thank for that. So when you come back, press one. Ooh, the lines are lit up. Got to get to a commercial break right quick. But while we're at a commercial break, we're at 987 on YouTube. I need you to go to YouTube right now and tap that bell for notifications and subscribe. And please share that. We need to get a thousand before this day is out and we need your help. So question is, will you help us? Sure you will. We thank you in advance and thanks for listening. We'll be right back. Family, no job, relationships, are you in pain? Do you feel stuck? If you answer yes to any of these questions, talk a bit about it. Don't worry, it's not all right. I started a woman class, and you only feel this way because you haven't acted for both of them in your head. No hype, just down to earth, solid, workable tools and techniques that you can practice. It's really food for the soul. Whether you want to learn how not to worry about anything, whether it's how to diabetes, how to support, how to the product or service, or just make extra money. Take advantage of the deal of the day. Go to yogaspeech.com and call 209 6619. Mention promo code the female solution and get free shipping. That's yogaspeech.com. What happens when a group of people are kidnapped from their homes, smuggled away in chains, and held captive in a foreign land where they are tortured, raped, and forced to perform hard labor by the lash of a whip and under the constant threat of death? Slavery, the African American psychic trauma. What happens to the doctors, writers, scientists, builders, educators, and spiritual leaders from Africa's golden age? Who did they really capture and sell into slavery? Are all African Americans suffering from psychic trauma because of a conspiracy to hide their true identities? Do you have psychic trauma? Take the test on page 22 of the book and see. Or it online today at www.naimalatif.com. That's www.naimalatif.com. And get your personally autographed copy of the book, Slavery, the African American Psychic Trauma. Hi, I'm Dr. CJ of Laura Health, where we combine orthopedic manual therapy and neuroscience to treat the whole person. Help tip for the day is keep it moving. Doesn't matter how, just keep it moving, doing something you enjoy. Walking, dancing, rolling on the 
or with your dogs or kids, <laughs> really anything. The body craves movement to keep its bones, joints, and muscles happy. Even our mental health and internal organs and digestive system rely on our movement. Thanks for being a part of the Higher Learning Network and the Female Solution. One day to live to be 120 years old and remain active, healthy, alert, and vibrant. Our bodies are made up of cells that are constantly rejuvenating. So if we take proper care of ourselves, we can literally defy aging. Join us every Tuesday from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Central Standard Time to learn about self, self-care from the non-essentials on the Female Solution Blog Talk Radio Show. Learn how to help your body and yourself feel rejuvenated each day through proper nutrition, sleep, frequency medicine, and many unconventional methods of self-care. I'm Jody Susan. Join me and my amazing guests by calling in at 515-605-9325 and press 1 to speak. And we'll help you achieve a breakthrough in your health today. And that is our new host. Welcome to the family. Self Sail Care with Jody Susan, who will be joining us before we go off the air at about nine, uh, excuse me, uh, eight fifty-five on the female solution. Self Sail Care with Jody Susan of Susan Essentials. She is a sister I met, my sister from another mother. My sister, excuse me, my sister from another mister. I got to say that right. My sister from another mister. <laughs> and uh, I met her, what, probably about five years ago at the American Diabetes Association where I was speaking. Everybody knows I reverse type 2 diabetes. Go to diabeticdonut.com. Get your free download, how, how you can do it too. And um, we just kept in touch over the years. So now she's joining the Female Solution. So let us welcome her tomorrow here on the Female Solution. On Wednesday, Naima Latif and Kareem Hamid, Repairing Family Relationships. Thursday, Women's Roundtable. Friday, Health and Wellness with Viata. Saturday, our rotating host, Nonviolent Communication with Jana. Second Saturday, travel with the, uh, excuse me, the Black Taboo with Love, Joy, and Powers. Third Saturday, travel with Deborah. And uh, the fourth Saturday, our very own, <coughs> excuse me, let me clear my voice for this one. Mm. Our very own Wisdom with Mama D. Yes. And that is our lineup for the weekend on Sunday. Soul Purpose Healing with Viata. If you didn't hear the show last night, you got to go back and listen to it. And did you go to YouTube while we were in commercial break? I need to see the numbers grow. So please go to YouTube.com. Higher Learning TV show. You see that logo right there? You know it the right one. So click on it right now. I need you to do that. Okay. 515-605-9325. Press one to speak. As we go to the phone lines, area code. <clears throat> Excuse me, 706-202. You're live on the Female Solution Grand Rise. What's your name? Where are you calling from? And what's your comment as we celebrate the life and legacy Black History Month with Queen Mother, Cicely Tyson. I can't even get the words out. I'm so devastated. Queen Mother, we salute you. We give thanks for the elders right here, right now, because we know you have made the journey. You are safe in their arms, Mother Cicely Tyson. Queen Mother Cicely Tyson. Hi, who's on the uh, Female Solution line? Good morning. Grand Rising. <clears throat> Thanks for joining us. Grand <coughs> Rising. Spread the quantum calling you from Georgia. How are you? This Wonderful. Morning? Thank you for joining us uh, with Brother Lionel Abdul Haq this morning. And I'll say, I'm like my brother. And good to meet you too. <clears throat> Black history, my Well, it's our story. They. Carter G. Woodson created Black History Week in order to celebrate Lincoln, who emancipated us. The car in 1976 that Jimmy Carter gave the total month to us as honoring Black people in 1976. But what we're seeing here is that this is our story, just like you were reading from the book and saying that we created everything and and that is true and so we have to begin to honor our truth because we were the first human and creation and lionel i i commend you when you were talking about star wars being 
know, because we overstood the stars and that we aligned what we put as above, so below. And the part in which we were able to do it to align the, the stars, which is the biggest star that in our solar system is this year. And she is aligned with the pyramid and she's our calendar. And this is what the 31st of December is, is that she's at 180 degrees and she's directly over here. So he said, let there be light and his name, the sun, the moon, the stars, the signs and the seasons. The stars and constellations, we're right now in Aquarian age, moving into this era because all the planets that he named, basically we have five. I think it's five or six right now in the sign of Aquarius. So these are the signs in which we're beginning because the water bearer is what she is. And what we're seeing now is things being washed clear and, and the veils are being lifted and the minds are being uh, fed <coughs> because and overstanding our story because you define the people on land, history, and culture. Our story is the essence of human story. But what we have to begin to do is seek truth from within. And the light will shine upon those that need to see. Those who have eyes will see. Those who have ears will hear. Because it's through you Zelda and all the women of color that bring forth the knowledge because when you educate a woman, you educate a nation. When you educate a man, sorry, brother, we just get something to think about. <laughs> so it's through, it's through the divine feminine that we are educated and because she carries, like the, the new sister that's coming on, it's the self. It's in the cell, and the cell in itself mm. is, is the universe. Because if you had a, uh, a giant microscope and looked into a cell, you would see the same thing you see in the universe. Mm. So we're all connected in our oneness. So this honoring our queen, and her book, Just As I Am, of all the things in which she showed with her a regalness of what a woman of color is supposed to be about when she's even visioned by others and you know, she carried that and she lived that and so it's good that we're seeing you know this time that she lived to be 96 mm -hmm. and and this is the part in which it was, was for us to see you know, the greatness of it, because she was the queen, and then Hank Aaron was the king of, of home run. Mm -hmm. But there was a king and queen that left this earth in that same time, in that time. And, but these are the things in which we need to see, to see ourselves. Mm. So I thank us for honoring our people, but every day is our day. Mm. Amen. Thank you so much for sharing that, Brother Kwame. <clears throat> Sun horse from, from Georgia. Is it nice and warm down there, or is it? You, I know you all didn't get both feet of snow like we did. No, we, no, we didn't get snow. We got rain and thunderstorms, and now it's cool. Okay. It's, this is the norm for, for the winter here. Mm. It's mostly rain, or sometimes we may get snow. I remember I moved here in 93, and they got an inch of snow. And they shut down the whole city. Wow. Wow. I'm going like what? Okay. Yeah. This this Chicago, oh. you can have a hundred feet of snow. We we still we're troopers. We gotta do what we gotta do. We're used to it. We're used to it. If you just tuned in this uh, morning. Yeah. I'm sorry, Kwame. No, I just wanted to say I just wanted to say we're people of the sun. Yes. And, and living in an ice age and, and being herded into that, that northern area was part design mm -hmm. and that we've been taking out of our element and our disconnection from nature mm. and this is part of what we need to go back and look at the overground railroad that which is above us and being able to be as the Milky Way 
and this is what Star Wars was showing us because the Dogon that knew all of the stars and the systems long before there was even telescopes. How did our people know how to map our universe? Because we were one with it. Mm. Brother Lionel, you were right on target this morning. I, I never, I never, I, I know people will say, what's wrong with you? Where were you at? I never saw the Star Wars series. What made me look at it, what one that I did see was James Earl Jones. And you talk about the force being in full effect. I didn't know who Darth Vader was, Luke Skywalker, or Skywalker. I didn't know any of those. All I knew was James Earl Jones was the voice. And it was his voice that made me look, look at it. I didn't know that there were... It was a series. I Would had. You, Go ahead. Could I share? Because Star Trek was really more powerful than Star Wars. Because in its essence, it showed us. Because the first person that communicated with the universe was Lieutenant Oruhu, which was a black woman. Mm -hmm. The one who navigated was Laval Burton, mm. that had been able to navigate, and he was blind. And then the essence of it was is, is uh, Deep Space Nine, which was completion when they were at the wormhole with Avery Book. So Gene Roddenberry told our story of our universal knowledge. Mm. Right there in Star Wars. No, Star Trek. I mean, Star Trek. I get it mixed up. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not a follower. <laughs> Well, thank you so much uh, for sharing that. Let's. I'm gonna leave your line open, Kwame. Let's go to the uh, phone line, get some more calls. Area code three one two six seven one. You're live on the Female Solution Grand Rising. What's your name? Where you calling from? And what's your comment? Three one two six seven one. You're live on the Female Solution. We cannot hear you as we go to the phone lines. Let's take another call. Seven seven three seven three seven. You are live on the Female Solution. Grand Rising. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hallelujah, greetings, global transform. Hallelujah, greetings. Where's the with Mama D? Thank you, Mama D. I'm sorry. And don't you forget it. Uh-uh, can't forget so, it. Uh, don't want to forget it. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Ooh. You, Thank you, Mama Dia. Love you, I too. Thank too. you for calling this morning. Okay. Black history <laughs> was shared by Cosby and he sacrificed his love in so doing. But it began when darkness covered the face of everything in existence. Because there was no light. So if God had a color, the only color that there was was black. Mm. So here's the story. But the black just reminds me of of, of, of of my shadow. Our shadow follows us uh, wherever we go. Mm. It reminds us that we have a soul. And the shadow is always there. So it is it, 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 it's just been about a shadow because earlier somebody said something about a phantom. Mm -hmm. I mean, you think of your, your shadow and oh, yay, though I walk through the shadow of death. No, your shadow is you. It's you. It's mimicking you all the time. Mm. Shadow is a fascinating thing. No, it's not like looking in the mirror. Uh -huh. I mean, it's there, but depending on the level of light, you don't see it. Mm -mm. But the shadow is there. Always there. It is reminding you of your spirituality. It is reminding you that you have a soul. Mm. And you can see it through that shadow. Mm. The shadow knows. The shadow knows. It is your soul. I remember that. The shadow knows. <laughs> Ah, are you taking us back, Mama D? I love it. The shadow knows. No, that was a program on television once a long ago. It was uh, called The Shadow Knows. Yes, the, that's why I said that. I was like, okay, people probably don't know what she's talking about because that's old school for real. That was before, what, what, what was that, Barnabas Collins? Uh, what was the... Right, uh, 
Yes, ma'am. All that black face mimicking of us that taught us to hate ourselves and, and black face taught the whole planet to hate us as a people. Sure did. But getting back to that uh that is that hair. She was the first one that ever came across the uh, the uh, Academy Award and she had that cornrow style mm -hmm. and her eyes fucking and looking at this was she was in that queenliness, you know, mm. going well about that. So, so, and it was just a couple of years ago when, when I uh, think with California, they passed a law called the Crown Act. So, mm. a black woman, yes, in the 20th to 21st century can finally wear her hair natural, wear her hair in, in grace, and not be fired on her job. Yes, ma'am. I had a guest on the show. We talked about it. Yes, ma'am. And, and they get back to the hair. Mm -hmm. Our history was hijacked. The hero, that, that's why that Bible is a black history book. If you read it, if you uh, uh, understand it, it's spirit and in truth. Because the hero of that Bible is described as a as, as woolly hair. And only the black people, sheep and lambs, have really hair and goats and kids have straight hair. So all the brown, red, yellow, and white people, they have straight hair. Only the original man has really hair. And the, the Bible that black people described it, but we, they changed, they hijacked our black history Bible book, and they changed the state from brown color your feet bone is connected to your leg bone and that's connected to your thigh bone and goes up to your face bone and if you got brass colored feet or dark metal then you got a brass colored face because there are no rainbow colored people mm. no feet back no face he had a a, a really hair and a black face and uh they made they, they colored his face white and gave him straight hair and that's where the original hijacking starts. So all the stuff that they have hijacked is time for us to hijack it back and tell the truth. That's what that House Bill 4954 is now pending in Springfield to put the days of respect on the school calendar because when you change the brain, you will transform the behavior and create a better, a more perfect person. If you want a more perfect union, first get together with the more perfect person. So that book, that uh, HP forty nine fifty four on the school calendar, like wearing the color green is on the school calendar. That's about Irish history, and that's about really uh, affirming Irish history. So the days of respect will officially affirm the three key principles of the American Civil Rights Renaissance of the 1960s. We did not start uh, the, the history, it's a renaissance, it was a rebirth, that period from 1954 to 1965. So uh, they will visually affirm the three key principles of the movement, human and civil rights, the only people on the planet that had our human rights taken away from us by law. So January 15th, white color. 
April 4th, black color. Principles of nonviolence. Why is that the best method to use? And obviously, a black and white color, spiritual and moral principles of righteousness, justice, peace, peoplehood, and cultural coexistence. And what I like about House Bill 4954 uh, is not just because I drafted it, and and uh, uh, Rashawn Ford and Sonia Harper introduced it, and now we've got 10 other uh, sponsors on it, but because it's from the standpoint of the Jim Crow genocide survivor, which I am one. And uh, so they hide that down here. My question is, don't you think it's time they did that on purpose? Don't you think it's time that we hijack it back and spiritually succeed from the whole satanic system of subordination and be in the world and not of it by Yahshua the Messiah? The Christ who most saw Jesus said in Matt St. John uh, 17 9. I do not pray for the world. Get that. I do not pray for the world. I pray for those that are in the world and not of it, like I was in it and not of it. Amen, so Mama D. Spiritual possession is on, and spiritually, will you get your hat? What, what, what was that house bill again, Mama D? 1849 and 184954 No, HB. Oh, HB. 49954. And how can people participate in that to be sure that that bill move, house bill moves forward? Well, it's been moving forward this last uh February when it was first introduced because it's been getting more and more responsive to it. Okay, good. But what they Get in touch with their uh, state senator or their state representative and say, We want to, for the first time in our history, we want our history to go from the, the survivor's point of view. Right? If you go to get to the Holocaust, you go to the Holocaust survivors. Yes. So if you want to know about Jim Crow genocide, you should go to the Jim Crow uh, genocide uh, uh, survivors. And so we can go into the classroom and give our firsthand experience of what it was and not somebody else's uh, uh, perception and, and interpretation of what it was. And they were not in it and they don't know anything about it. You get your firsthand knowledge. And that's what was wonderful to me about uh, Cicely uh, Tyson. Uh, uh, and also somebody compares me to her. I will compare myself to Ida B. Wells because she, I have my degree from Columbia College. She was a journalist and she was dark skinned. Mm -hmm. And she did, it, it wasn't at this time when it was a brown stick around, no, uh, yellow, mellow, brown stick around, and black get back. Mm -hmm. But when you can have a, a, a black woman, dark skinned, standing up and speaking out. Yeah, you're really doing something. Amen. Thank you so much for sharing that, Mama D. It is Wisdom with Mama D. It's 832 on the Female Solution. My co-host today is Lionel abdul Hawk, and I want him to comment as soon as we come back from this commercial break. So you stay close, and I need you to go to YouTube right now. For all of you who are listening, we have 987. We need 1,000 subscribers, and we can make it happen today, right now. So as we go to this commercial break, please pay attention. Go to youtube.com, Higher Learning TV Show, and subscribe. Thank you as we go to our next break. We have an opportunity to transform the whole global society in the next 50 years. 50 years from now, the earth will be populated by a new generation of adults, many of whom are yet unborn. Our mission is to nurture them in childhood with love, guidance, and protection, and to raise them in healthy, happy families. If we impart values of compassion, generosity, and respect for all human beings in the next generation of children, they will create a world where people can live together in peace. This is our goal. Be a part of the transformation. Get your copy of the book, The Female Solution. Go to www.naimalatif.com and www.naimalatif.com. This is Minister Cynthia.
Emory Williams, spiritual counselor and advisor. I invite you to a private meeting in the areas of business, health, finances, relationships, by introductory cost of $20. Please call because there is a higher power that can help me help you. 312-802-4743. Peace and blessings to you all. Call me. 312-802-4743. I'm Fiata, your holistic life coach. These days, it's more important than ever to work on your physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual health. Are you consciously breathing deeply in stressful moments? Do you have a plan or daily routine to maintain balance in your awesome body? Are you struggling to be disciplined in your eating habits? When you partner with me, I'll help you develop a personalized health plan that works for your particular lifestyle. You can find out more about me at yourholisticlifecoach.com, where you can also review my three-step protocol to guide you to a moment health. That's yourholisticlifecoach.com, and I'm the author. Hi, I'm Naima Latif. Join me and my co-host, Kareem Ami, every Wednesday morning, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. on the Female Solution Radio Show as we explore that relationship that is the foundation for our society, the relationship between men and women, husbands and wives. Join our discussion as we seek to repair broken family ties and rebuild our community. Listen online at www.blogtalkradio.com slash the-female-solution. Call in and comment 515-605-9325. Press 1 to speak to our host. Or you can join us live on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash the-female-solution. And that is our executive producer, Naima Latif, who will be joining us uh, at the 9 o'clock hour for the Family Empowerment Hour, as well as on Wednesdays, she is a host with Brother Kareem Hamid, Repairing Family Relationships. But tomorrow, Tuesday, self-care with, excuse me, self-sell care with Jody Susan as we welcome her to the Female Solution. She'll be joining us tomorrow. And on Thursday, it's the Women's Roundtable, where we get quiet and we, well, no, we don't get quiet. We talk about what happened on Wednesday. How about that? How about that? Friday, Health and Wellness with Viata. And on Saturdays, we have rotating hosts of nonviolent communication with Jana on the first Saturday. Second Saturday, Black Taboo with Love, Joy, and Powers. Third Saturday, Travel with Deborah. And fourth Saturday, our very own wisdom with Mama D. And don't forget about Sunday, Soul Purpose Healing with Viata. If you didn't hear the show last night and hear how important it is that numbers are in your life, then you got to go back to the archives. All the shows are in the archives. All you have to do is listen. I uh, am joined this morning by our very own Lionel abdul Hawk of Community Cultivations. And we are talking about Black History Month. And the movie review Star Wars series, not the Star Wars. Yeah, well, it is a Star Wars series. Uh, I think it is. I get my wars mixed up. Star Star Trek, Star Wars. Was it the the Phantom Menace? Was that in Star Wars, Lionel? Yes. Oh, I, I said that right. And what did, did I'm sorry? It was Star Wars. Okay. Okay, because I was about to say Star Trek, but I was like, nope, it, it was Star Wars. Because as I said, I didn't uh, hear that movie. But what were your 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 thoughts and comments on on what our callers had, on Wisdom with Mama D, what she had to say, and, and uh, also Brother uh, Kwame Sunhorse? You want to? Con- oh, I mean, I mean, it was you know, your comments are you know, uh, <clears throat> you know, I mean, usually very uh, thoughtful and. and uh, I appreciate uh, what they have to say. I, I, I really wish, uh, I, I think if there any, you know, I would prefer have other people call and get the same people all the time. Uh, they think everybody, you know, these are people who have a lot to say 
and they tend to uh, to do so all the time. But uh, well, that's but what the show is about: people calling in, expressing their opinions. And uh, I would like to hear from somebody else. You know, sometimes we, you know, the, uh, the object is to reach people who are who are not on the air all the time, uh, and to get people to call in who 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 are having genuine uh, uh, questions related to the subject. Okay, well, let's continue with the subject and not like, let's not focus on the callers. Let's let's continue with the subject because we only got twenty minutes left here. Lionel, did I lose you? Let's focus on us, not the other people. Let's stay on the subject at hand. Let's not deal with other people. Let's just let's just deal with the subject. You wanted to finish your your statement about um, the movie review, The Phantom Menace. Well, the, the, the concept is one of the things I want to point out is that uh, the Scorsese movie is a uh, 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 is a the desire for power, and and, and that has kept um, kept us from really working, focusing on what's really important. I think it's and it is really it's really essential that we recognize that we are not God, and that we, that the Creator is the one that we should be um, seeking to um, guide our lives. And the emphasis that I've tried to put in all of my conversation is the need for us to seriously study and um, try to find out who, who God is and uh, to be sincere in that and to then devote yourself to following that guidance because uh, if you, whether you choose Christianity, Islam, or Judaism, we all have uh, fundamental principles and if you study them all, you will find that those principles generally are the same. It's where you get into the doctrine, uh, other aspects of the doctrine, that the divisions of race and nationality become predominant to the principles and the ideals that unite all of them. And that's the political aspect. And I think that's what we need to understand that there has been a political influence to to move to shape people's behavior using religion to do so. And 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 religion that does not require that you that you be disciplined, that you be intelligent, that you feed your mind, that you be moral in your character. Is not is not emphasizing what the Creator wants us to do, because without without a sense of morality, you are fundamentally on the wrong path. Without a sense of right and wrong that comes from the Creator and that guides your behavior, that shapes you and prevents you from going too far to the left or too far to the right. You 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 don't have a a uh, a good solid foundation to protect you from the devils who are out here designed trying to make you support what they want. And this is a problem. The, the sport and play, the fun and games, the the sin that is out here in the world that is pervasive is a testimony to the fact. That we've been misled, bamboozled, one walked and led astray, and that what we claim to be in the name of our religion is really just a, a shell mm. because we're not living according to those ideals. And um, much of what, especially in the context of Christianity, that tells people that you don't have to do anything, that your deeds don't mean nothing. It's just what you say out your mouth in terms of your confession of belief in something that saves you. No, that's not what saves you. What saves you is your 
character. And 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 the, the character of most people in the modern world is very weak. It's mm. very foolish. And that's what has to change. We gotta get serious about what we say we believe in the sense of putting it into practice those principles and ideals that most of the religions have within it, but most people don't follow. I agree with that. Many and that's what's gonna save us. Mm. That's what's gonna save us. Mm. Uh, it is east, um I'm gonna say eleven forty-five. It's uh eight forty-five. We're listening to uh, Brother Lionel Abdul Hawk, co-host of Community Cultivations on this first Monday of the month, as well as the first day of Black History Month. Black History Year, because as I told you at the very beginning, the book, <clears throat> excuse me, the book that I'm reading is Black People Invented Everything by Dr. Sujan Kumar Das, uh, founder of the so Solutionary Institute. You've got to get this book and yeah. put it in your um, collection. We are waiting on the book from Brother Lionel Abdul Hot. You know, that's a, a lengthy process and that takes time. But one of the things that I think that would really help us as a human family, as you said, Lionel, is to get away from the color issue because that is simply a distraction to continue to keep us divided. Because the truth is always hidden and it is usually hidden within ourselves and we don't get quiet long enough to hear that conversation because we have been inundated with artificial intelligence and, and that being all these electronic appliances that we have. If you would like to join the conversations, we can probably take a few more calls at 515-605-9325. Press one to speak as we go to 708-677. You are live on the female solution. Grand Bison, what's your name? My Ika, my Ika, Grand Rising, my sister. So good to hear your voice. You too, dear. Glad to hear your voice on this first day of African American History Month. I really have an announcement, but I want to make a comment on this thing of color. Mm -hmm. You know, when you understand yourself as a living soul, and somebody comes up to you and says to you, uh, because my skin is lighter than yours, I'm better than you, you would just laugh. Mm. You don't focus on the physical. A soul is not physical. Or well, let's say the physical is the uh, lowest vibration of a soul, the lowest vibration of the soul. And it really doesn't matter. So we really do need to focus on who we are as soul beings and really come to understand the power is inherent in that. Mm. Uh, my announcement is that uh, the February edition of the Tank Home 365 calendar is now available for free Ooh. at a new bean.com. That's A N E W bean.com. And you can download the February calendar either as a 11 by 17 calendar, or, you know, an 8 and a half by 11 top and an 8 and a half by 11, or 11 by 8 and a half bottom. So that's available at a newbeam.com, and it's for free so that you can follow the month of February and all of the events that have taken place in African American history in the month of February. It is a lot of stuff that to place during the month of February. So I invite you and your guests to take advantage of this calendar and put it up in your home and give it to your children, let them know what's going on. So thank you so much, brother, for allowing me to make this announcement. And you have a blessed and peaceful day, as well as you, Brother Hop. How are you? Glad to hear your voice also. Peace and peace to you too. 
Thank you so much, Maika. We miss you here on The Female Solution, and we know that you're doing wonderful things. I'm at the website right now, anewbeing.com, and I'm going to download my February free calendar as well. So I hope everyone else will do the same. This is a, this is a beautiful. Let people know about it, too. Of course. I'm going to put it on my social media as well as on my blog, which I'm about to do right now. So thank you so much for sharing Great. that information. And, you know, Jody is coming on. Jody's the lady who is filling in your slot for you. She'll be on in, in a few minutes. She can't fill in for me. She's doing Tuesday. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean, girl. Nobody can fill in. Nobody can replace. Be, right. Yes, ma'am. Nobody can, can, can replace. Or fill in for yeah. my Ica, because there's only one my Ica. But until you decide to come back, that would be Jody uh, talking to Susan of Susan Essentials talking about self sale care. So thank you, my Ica. We appreciate you. I'm not understanding what you're saying when you say self sale. Are you saying C E L L? Yes, ma'am. Self sale care. Okay. And oh, yes, okay, well, already she should be calling in That's shortly true. too. So, okay, so thank you so much. We appreciate you calling, Maika. And we appreciate, all right, take care now. thank you, sweetie. We appreciate all of our uh listeners this morning. Jody is, is supposed to call in. Uh, Lionel, you want to give us a uh closing thought here this morning? Take your time because we got a few minutes as we wait on Jody to call in. Well, I'm basically answering to some peace. I wish peace, peace, peace be upon everyone. I think we believe uh, it's, it's really essential that we uh, strive to be um, sincere in our, in our efforts to uh, know who God is and to, uh, to follow what we think we believe as much as possible. Um, that uh, this world is changing rapidly, and um, I believe that uh, it's essential that we change rapidly. Uh, the things that we, that are going on in the world, uh, the, the turmoil that is happening, the revolutions that are um, manifesting all over Russia, Myanmar, uh, Europe, are signs of the time that change is on the horizon. And if we uh, act on changing the mindset that we've been given, we're not going to uh, to make it. We've got to get back in touch with much of what we've been separated from in terms of fundamental character, uh, fundamental human character. Uh, what it means to be human is to be a humble, uh, caring, uh, concerned, uh, committed person who uh, seeks to follow the guidance of the, the Creator and to um, be uh, one who cultivates a better society, a better life for everyone, and being, and being willing to sacrifice oneself in the interest of a bigger, bigger objective. That's the kind of uh, a uh, human being that will make a better world uh, and, and keep us from becoming shallow and selfish, greedy, uh, and evil people. Um, stupid, fun, fun loving people who, who just want to play all the time. This is, uh, this is not um, where we need to be. And we've gotten way away from where we should be. And it's not it's not a, a impossible thing. The journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step, and with every step we make towards the truth, the truth will make ten towards us. All right, so we have to get real. We have to be real about that. Mm. So, what is the one thing that people who are listening to us on YouTube, Facebook? all other insta, um, social media platforms and the blog talk uh, platform here on The Female Solution, what's the one thing that we can begin to do today 
that would send us in or down that path? Be sincere. Be sincere. I think it's to be sincere. Be to sincere. Be sincere is to want to see what sin is. Mm. You want to see sin. You want to know the difference between what's right and what's wrong. You want to please God and to show yourself approved by seeking to understand. Understand. To, to, to get deep. To go beneath the surface. And to get into where the, uh, the things begin. How things have changed from the way it was in the beginning. Mm. Because it wasn't always this bad. Mm -mm. And, and most, 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 of, most of the things that we are uh, suffering from today came in recent history. They, didn't, they, weren't, they weren't a part of the old days. It wasn't a part of the, the original character of human life. Mm. And we got to get back in touch with principles and uh, be sincere in our devotion to our Creator. And if we seek it, we'll find it. It's not complicated. It's not hard. If you sincerely want to do what's right, and you sincerely want to know what's right, um, God will show you the way. Amen. And that's from our own brother, Lionel abdul Hawk of Community Cultivations. As we celebrate the first day of Black History Month here on the Female Solution on Monday Morning Mindfulness, celebrating legendary, iconic actress, queen mother, Cicely Tyson. Do you have contact information for people to, to contact you, Lionel? Um, my email is uh, lionelabdulhawk at gmail.com. Uh, my phone number is 773-642-1453. I like talking to people. I'm old-fashioned in that way. And uh, I would appreciate hearing from you more. And just to be sure, I'm typing the information in there. Uh, it says Lionel Abdul Hawk at Gmail. That's Lionel, L-I-O-N-E-L, A-B-D-U-L-L, H-A-Q-Q -Q at gmail.com, correct? And one L. And one L. Oopsie, I'm glad. Uh, I did say one L. Lionel Abdul Hawk. You said two L and not blue. Uh, I'm sorry, I only typed one. Okay. And what was the phone number? 312-642. I'm sorry, my bad. 773-642-1453. Yes. I got it right. Okay, the information. Gotcha. The information is there. If you all want to contact Lionel, there he is. You can email him. And thank you so much, Lionel, for sharing your thoughts and words of wisdom with us today as we come to a close of the show. Be sure and join us uh, on the nine o'clock hour for uh, the empowerment hour with uh, uh, our very own executive producer, Naima Latif. But right now, we are going to the phone lines with our Tuesday host, and that would be Jody Susan of Susan Essentials. And she's going to explain to you very briefly, we've got about a minute here, on what to expect tomorrow. Hi, Jody. Welcome to the Female Solution. Good morning. Grand Rising. What can we expect tomorrow as we welcome you to the Female Solution? Well, uh, new stuff. Um, I am uh, being joined by Stephanie Hunter of the Hunter Method. Um, actually, she and I used to go to high school together, Barrington High School. And she created, after doing um, years of massage, she created a, oh, we have a commercial. Oh, no, that's our closing. We have to play that. Okay. Let so you let you know you got less than a minute. Pain free. Pain free. So if you want to be pain free, you know. So that's it. And we'll we'll talk more later. But um, um, she's uh, amazing and highly studied, and she's endorsed by uh, Tony Robbins and his wife. Oh wow! 
that's powerful. <laughs> I'll be listening. You know, Tuesdays is don't is my don't call me day. Don't text me. Don't fax me because I won't be there. But I'll be listening in the morning. I promise you. So we will. Uh, well, I will join the conversation this morning um, in the morning. And we will also be joined by our uh, executive producer, Naima Latif, who is joining us now. So we look forward to having you, Jody. Thank you so very much, my sister from another mister. I've been so excited to be, um, you know, I'm so excited to be um, sharing with you guys. Yeah, and we look forward to, because we've had some spirited conversations. So you hang around for the... um, uh, after show and right now uh, at nine o'clock, uh, push one right now if you want to comment because the switchboard will cut you off at nine o'clock. So be sure as the close goes to an end, uh, we are uh, joined by executive producer Naima Latif as we begin nine o'clock. It is the family empowerment hour here on the female solution so welcome 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 naima the team and, and i want to remind all of those who are watching to go to your youtube channel and subscribe to the channel higher learning network show. higher learning tv show higher mm-hmm. learning tv show uh, one of the things that we do is encourage people to choose what they're going to listen to and watch because everything that you put into your mind is programming. And when you're constantly listening to things that make you sad or depressed or fearful, not only are you changing your mood, you're changing your body chemistry. And we're gonna learn so much from Jody. I'm I'm really excited about Tuesday's show. But we have the power to be eternally youthful if we would just stop destroying the energy in our bodies by ingesting all of this negative energy, all of this negative information, all of the images, all the words and sounds that we're choosing to watch on these other programs that do nothing but fill us full of fear and dread and sadness. So we have to choose what information we're going to digest every day. So we need to be watching Higher Learning TV on YouTube. Higher Learning TV show on YouTube is, what does the title say? Higher Learning. You're you're Mm -hmm. going to get some empowering information. Of course, it's also one of those programs that are advocated on the On Air Network. And On Air has a wonderful global guide to those broadcasts, the the TV shows, the internet, uh, radio shows, YouTube channels that are raising our consciousness. And this is alternative media that gives you not only hope and a sense of well-being, but also affects your body chemistry. Because anytime you are hearing or seeing something positive, it's changing your energy, which is changing your body chemistry, which is enhancing your immune system. So it's making you a healthier person when you listen to good news that is empowering you and giving you a vision of reality that is hopeful rather than dreadful. So these are the choices we need to make when we decide what we're going to digest every day in terms of the information going into our brains. It's a health issue. And we're going to learn from Jody how your cells are affected by everything you do. We're made of tiny cells and each cell is having an impact. So we use that example even to look at the world and humanity. All of us are like cells in the body of God. So, you know, if you have cancer cells, they're going to make the rest of the body sick and they tend to grow and multiply. Now, you don't want to have to cut off uh, uh, an arm because it's cancerous. You don't want to have to cut out your lung because it's cancerous. You want it to be healed. Similarly, we don't want to have to arrest and jail and execute people for committing crimes. We want them to be healed. 
We want them to be restored to wholeness, to wellness, to well-being so that they can be a positive contributor to society. And this is what these programs do. They help people who are suffering from an internal illness brought about by a wrong thought about themselves. Something that Maika said, which is a critical point, we're soul inside a body. We, mm. We're not a body, we have a body. And mm. your body doesn't define your worth. It's just the vehicle you're using to do the work that you're doing here. Mm. Mm. But if you allow somebody to make you believe that because the body that you're wearing is a particular color or shape or gender in terms of male, female, that you are of lesser value. If you allow that thought to influence you, then you're going to always be upset about what other people think about you and you will allow other people to define you. This is what we have to stop doing. Stop allowing other people's definitions of our worth to be a part of what we believe about ourselves. That's what keeps us upset about racism, sexism, classism, all these things, ageism. You know, these people don't like me, so let me change how I look. Oh, they don't like old people, so let me hurt them down my hair because, you know, they, they, don't, they don't like people who have aged. Oh, let me uh, hurry up and, 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 and get some surgical changes to fix my nose because they don't like my ethnicity in my nose. You know, let me hurry up and, and change my, my hair texture because they don't like it and they won't give me a job. You know, all this insanity. So the most empowering thing we can do is first res respect ourselves for who we are as a soul, which is the life force energy of the creator. Mm. We are an expression of God. We are God mind inside a body. And nobody can change that by anything they say about us or think about us or write about us or talk about us or teach about us. Nobody can change the reality of who we are. This is how we have to empower our children to think. We have to change our thinking. We were we were raised to think, well, you know, you gotta, you gotta, first we were taught something insane. Well, this is the white man's world. You got to play by his rules. How insane is that? Okay. The world belongs to the creator and we are all part of the creation. We're all part of the creative energy. No one owns anything on this earth. They don't. Now they may, confiscate it and threaten physical violence to somebody who tries to get it, but they don't own it because you, when you leave here, you leave here in this body you were wearing, it goes back to the earth where it belongs. So we have to erase that illusion in order to empower ourselves to change the conditions that we're living in. We first have to know we have the power to do it. And you can't do that as long as you're believing that someone else is more powerful than you because of the way they look or the way they speak. We are all powerful creators, all of us, regardless of what body we're wearing. So this is how we have to change what we're teaching our children and what we're allowing them to be taught. They are here as creative beings to manifest all the power that they are endowed with at birth. No one can give or take away the reality of who and what they are. We have to teach them that in the beginning and stop teaching the disempowering things we were taught that we have to conform to somebody else in order for us to be liked so that we can survive. No one controls survival. All of us have the power to create whatever we need to survive. We need to know that so that we can manifest it. And this is the most empower th empowering thing we can do is to stop teaching our children that someone else controls whether or not they survive. Someone else has the power to define their worth. Someone else is of greater value than them. We must stop teaching that because that is the lie that was taught to us. And most of us are struggling with low self-esteem because we believed the lie. So we have to undo what has been taught to us that is incorrect. And I'm so glad you started out the show with, all of the inventions and everything that have been done by the creative minds of those who are inhabiting bodies of dark skin. Because 
we have been indoctrinated with the belief system that if you have dark skin, that there's something wrong with you, there's something lesser about you, you are lesser intelligent and all of that insanity. We are infinite intelligence inside a body where the quality of melanin manifests as dark coloring, a protection from the sun and its elements and identifying us as having been uh, part of an ancestral line that came out of certain parts of the earth, the African continent. And so our bodies are merely the vehicles that adapt to the environment. That's where our physical features come from. And that's all it is. So we have to teach our children a science that helps them understand that fact so that they know the crinkly hair, the wide nose, the lips, the coloring, all of that is a body's adaptation to an environment. Yeah. And so you're inheriting that genetically because of so many thousands of years of, of adaptation, even though you might be living in a different climate. So your body tells a story of, the history of the people from whom you descend genetically. That's all it does. It doesn't make you better, lesser, smarter, dumber, none of that. It's the vehicle that your soul is wearing to do your soul's work. Hmm. So when we empower our children with this knowledge, then we also remove the chance for them to be indoctrinated with prejudice, racism, hatred, irrational fear of other people who look different because they'll know that there is no difference. We're all the same. We're all souls. We're all from God. We're all expressions of God. And so if that is the reality that we teach our children, then they can never be made to feel like they don't have the ability to think and imagine and envision and create. And we will free them from some of our restrictions because we have been taught over a lifetime that other people are more powerful than, than we are and can prevent us from doing things. And so what is that saying by Carter G. Woodson? If you teach a man that he's inferior, you don't have to tell him to go to a back door. He will go to the back door. And if he doesn't find a back door, he will carve one out. If you are taught that you are lesser than somebody, then you will behave as if you're less, lesser than someone. You won't strive for things because you don't believe yourself worthy. And a lot of us, we've talked about this before, a lot of people have difficulty in business because underlying their belief about themselves is a, a feeling of unworthiness. I'm not worthy to charge you money for my skills, even though these skills cost me money to learn them and I have mastered them and I'm good at what I do, but I hesitate to give you a price for what I do because inside I don't feel worthy. Mm, mm. And so many of us will, and I've seen people do this often. They have a skill and they're in the business of supplying this skill. Comcast business account payment. And they will be asked what it is that they charge for their skill. And they'll say, well, I don't know. And then they never give a price. And then they do the work. And then the person doesn't pay them. And then they're angry. And I have had many, many friends who've done this. And I always ask them, well, did you give them a contract before you started? Well, no. But did you give them a price? Well, no. Did you give them an invoice afterwards? Well, no. Okay, so how are you expecting to get paid when you did nothing to indicate that what you did was of value and therefore they should pay you? Hmm. They didn't cheat you. You cheated yourself because you didn't believe yourself worthy of payment. I've seen this pattern. And that pattern is a manifestation of people who are lacking 
belief in their own work. That was my and, that was my pattern. I had a minister at church till ask me to um, film something. I was doing photography at the time, what thirty years ago, and he asked me what I charged. And I was like, oh, you know, it doesn't matter. Just he's like, what? He said, you don't love yourself or value yourself. You know? I got offended. What do you mean I don't love myself? I'm preaching. Wow. I mean, I went there. I got indignant. Mind you, this was a white minister too. Mm. So he didn't understand my misunderstanding. Mm. But I went home and had a conversation with myself and I said, never <laughs> do that. I said, self, you will not have that experience again because this is I'm a, I'm gonna walk around with my card in my hand. This is this is what I charge. Either you want it or you can go somewhere else and get it at a cheap rate. But right. but for my excellent work, this is my fee. This is this is it. right. Take it or leave it. And we have to believe that because people who value what we do and they want good quality will pay the price. Yes, they will. I'm living proof. Absolutely. So, and and in most people, when you point that out to them, the first thing would be defensiveness. Because what do you mean I don't love myself? I, I, I just, you know. That's what I said. Right, absolutely. Because it doesn't sound good to say, well, you don't love yourself. You don't. Mm -hmm. But we have to face it because the lack of self-love is a result of being told we're unworthy of love in so many different ways. Whether it's a school system that tells us that if you don't perform a certain way, then you won't graduate and get a job and people won't like you and then you're going to end up homeless. And they give you all of these things that give you the impression that other people's liking you can decide whether or not you succeed when in fact, Nobody can keep you from mastering skills that are valuable. Nobody can keep you from learning. Nobody can keep you from seeking information. But what we end up teaching in our school systems is that if we don't please a certain group of people, we're not going to be able to survive. Instead of, and if you learn how to do things, if you learn how to take care of yourself, if you learn the skills you need for your survival, you don't need anybody to approve of you. Just master the things that are valuable for living. And if you have an idea, a creative idea or a business, a product, a service you want to do, be the best at it. And people who desire what you have and respect the fact that you respect yourself will pay you. But it takes a while for us to undo the conditioning of believing we are not worthy. And this has to be done. Each person, if you find yourself hesitating to ask for money for work that you have performed, ask yourself what you fear. And what you fear is someone confirming your fear that you are not worthy. So if they say no, then you're going to feel bad. And this is why people who don't have a high enough self-esteem can't really excel in sales. Because sales requires you to believe in your worthiness as well as the worthiness of the product you're selling. But if you don't believe in your own worthiness, you're going to have difficulty closing a sale. And no matter how great the product is, you will be afraid to ask for the money. And I have seen people also lose money selling products because they'll say, well, I'll just let you have it for a while and see how it works. And then, you know, if you like it, pay me. And I've seen people lose all kinds of money because they, they, they would not ask for the money for the merchandise that they were selling. They gave it away and hope that the person in, in there, the goodness of their heart would eventually pay them. And when the person didn't, they want to get angry at the person, but it wasn't the person's fault. You didn't believe enough in yourself to ask for the money for the merchandise you were selling. And you know, everybody wants something free. So if you don't ask, you don't get. And this is unfortunately a pattern of people who are lacking a sense of self-worth. So this is something that we need to correct in ourselves. 
and first recognize it. If you keep focusing on what other people say about you or what other people think about you or the lies they tell about you, then you're actually reinforcing the negative image of yourself. And it makes it difficult for you to overcome the belief in your own lack of value. So stop repeating those things. Do the things that remind you of your greatness, that you're coming from people who've done great things, people who have achieved things, people who are intelligent and valuable and resourceful. Keep telling those stories to yourself. Repeat those things because that's what's going to shape your belief about yourself and your confidence in yourself. And then recognize what you're saying to your children. If you are raising children, especially if you're at the age where you're raising school age children, you have got to make sure that you instill in them a sense of power, a sense of capability, a sense of worthiness. You have to instill it in them consciously. And sometimes you have to deprogram them from things said to them by teachers who don't know any better because they were taught by teachers who didn't know any better. You have to make sure that your children are receiving constant reinforcement of their intelligence, their worthiness, their strength, their power, their ability to make good decisions and their ability to manifest an idea. Encourage their imagination, encourage their vision. Don't repeat negative things that you might have heard said to you growing up in school. Well, it, 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 you're not smart enough to this. Oh, you you don't know how to do that. Oh, you're you're you're. You, well, you know you never succeed in that. Don't let anybody tell your child what they can't do, and don't you tell them what they can't do. Always encourage their dreams, their goals, their visions. If they want to be an astronaut, okay, that's good. Now, what you can do is find out the, the classes you need to take in order to be a good astronaut. Start preparing yourself now. Start reading up on it. Give them a vision. You know, take them to the planetarium. See if you can have them talk to some of the astronauts that are alive today. Go to the internet. Find some of the lectures. Find some of the programs. Help them see themselves and wherever they want to see themselves. Don't, well, we ain't got no money to be sending you to school for that. Do not kill a child's dreams by your lack of belief in your own self and therefore your lack of belief in them. So the most empowering thing we can do is to undo our belief in our lack of power. Mm. Whatever we are living, it is, it's a manifestation of our thoughts about ourselves. So if a person finds themselves living in a rundown apartment, don't blame racism. Don't blame the president. <laughs> don't blame your alderman. If you're living in a home, no matter what it looks like, if the curtains are torn and raggedy, ask yourself, why am I not either sewing up these curtains or buying some new curtains? If, they're, if the floors are dirty, ask yourself, why am I not mopping the floors for myself? Because I want to feel like I'm in a clean environment. If there are dirty clothes all over the floor, ask yourself, why am I living in disorder? Why don't I tidy up for myself? Because most of the time, the reason why we get depressed and sad is because of the atmosphere we're allowing ourselves to live in. If on your block there is trash all up and down the street, whiskey bottles, don't blame the city, don't blame the alderman. They should come and clean this up. You live there. Clean up where you live for yourself. When I was in China, and I was surprised I was walking down, the, looked like the downtown area because I was on my way to uh, the airport. I had to take the uh, the 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 subway in China. I'm walking to downtown here. I'm seeing the shop owners out there hosing off the front of their 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 business, sweeping. I didn't see a garbage can anywhere, but I saw no garbage. Mm -hmm. So the the thought is, I'm going to keep my place clean. 
And they did. And some of these folks, they, they didn't look like the hired help. They weren't city workers. This is, this is this is the business I own. I'm out here with a broom. I'm out here with the hose cleaning off the sidewalk so that it's clean. I'm doing this for me because of my pride in myself. Mm -hmm. And I said, now, when's the last time I saw people who own a business out there cleaning up the street if there's trash? No, they'll complain that the city didn't come and, and, and clean it up or somebody else is supposed to do it or all oh, these kids that come past here and they throw these potato chip bags on the street and they leave them right there. So why are we not having enough pride to do things for ourselves? If you don't feel you're worthy of cleanliness, then you allow your environment to stay dirty. So wherever you live, it's a reflection of the individual and collective consciousness, the collective belief about your worth. It's not for someone else to come and make you feel worthy of a nice garden with flowers and clean streets and grass and trees. It is your power to create. You can plant those things. You can cultivate those things. You can pick up the garbage. If you don't do it, that means you don't believe you're worthy of it. So think about what your environment is telling you about how you feel about yourself and if you allow yourself to live in trash, what are you telling your children about their own worth? You're saying you are trash. Mm -hmm. And so if they behave like trash, don't be surprised. Mm -hmm. You've allowed them to be made to feel like trash by simply refusing to pick up garbage where you live. So these are the changes that we need to launch on this Black History Month a sense of self-pride, self-worth, self-respect. Don't wait for somebody else to give it to you. Don't wait for somebody else to tell you you're worthy of it. Believe that you are worthy and show yourself that you love and respect yourself. These are the things we must begin to do in order to change what we're seeing come out of our children because our children are only showing us what we have given them. Over the weekend, we did a report on the carjackings and, and what happened, of course, you know, our sister Africa and Melanie Brown, wonderful PR sisters, activists out here. Well, there had been a rash of carjackings at gunpoint. And they just said, look, we're calling on these men to step up. We can't have our sisters out here getting robbed and the people robbing them like, you what, 13, 14, 15, 16 year olds. Okay. At gunpoint. So what does that say? So it was a wonderful thing. Teal Hardiman, he put the call out there on his radio show. I want you all to meet me at 52nd and Lake Park. And we're going to go to these, these gas stations. And we're going to uh, guard the women while they get gas. And it was wonderful. You know, more than 200 men showed up. And it was great. There was a show of unity and a, a sense of pride and manhood. And realizing we are responsible. We are responsible for the atmosphere that we create in our neighborhoods. If we show that we care, then we will see a different change in the behavior of those who have been acting like nobody cares. That's why they didn't care. They wouldn't care about robbing somebody mm -mm. because we've allowed them to live in places that say to them, you are trash. We allowed that. So now we're changing what we do and what we say and how we behave and how we show we care about each other. So we had a chance to see a transformative act because men chose to step up to that fatherly role of protecting those in their midst and putting in check those who've been out of control. So our next step then is to reverse the thought that we have allowed to be implanted in the minds of our youth, that they are trash, they're unworthy, they're incapable of earning a morning, morning, morning. that is a legal way of earning a living. We have to change what we have allowed to be placed in their minds by showing them something different. And we can change what's happening in our community. And it doesn't mean calling in more police with guns to shoot up everybody and throw everybody in jail. It means us showing love and respect first for ourselves 
and then we'll spread it to others and we'll see the change because we are the change we need to see. Well said, my sister. If you want something different, do something outrageous and that is invest in yourself. It doesn't get any better than that. You can't wait on them to do it out there. That's not how it works. It's an inside job. The secret is out. Yeah. It's an inside job. <gasps> inside job. You mean I got to get quiet? I got to turn the phone off? I got to turn the TV and the radio off? Oh, I can't text? Oh, no. <gasps> I might hear something. I might hear the creator speak to me in that quiet time because you, I can't hear it if all I hear is noise out there. That's right. Wow, the secret is out, girl. It's Black History Month, and we're telling all the secrets. Mm -hmm. And while you're telling, tell somebody. Do, do yourself a favor. Go get this book. Did you know at the, at the bottom of Black People Invented Everything, Investigate the Science of Self by Dr. Sujan Kumar Das? I'm waiting to get him on the show. You know that, right? Mm. At the bottom, Naima, it says, founder of the Solutionary Institute. Wow. Great minds think alike. Well, we said we're solutionaries. Did you do that? And it was, it was just in me. You know, I could have went to the library, but something said, no, you need to get this book. So I ordered this wow. book. And when I heard everything that we invented, literally everything. When I heard Hulu, mm. like Netflix and Prime, Hulu. Wow. Everything you can think of, we invented. But they're not going to tell you that. And it's in a book. They say, if you really want to know, had the truth from a black person, put it in a book. That's a lie. That we we disrupt that myth too. We'll find it. We will find it now. We because we are writing the book. So we thank will you. Find it. Hallelujah. Yes. We and, write them. And this is why we have to say something different to our children than what has been said to them by others discouraging them. We have to let them know you are here to create. You are here to invent. You have all the intelligence you need and whatever you see in your environment, you don't have to steal, rob, kill, create what you need. You have the mind that can create your own car. You can you can develop a car that runs on 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 steam power, on water power, on something other than than gasoline because you were born for this time to create what we need. So don't ever think you have to steal in order to have, you have the power to create all that you need. And when we tell this to our children, it's a whole different mindset. Mm -hmm. They see things totally different. Yes. And it's time. And it's about that time that we close out the empowerment the Family Empowerment Hour. But before we do that, be sure and go to the website, uh, anewbeing.com and download your free calendar. A new being, A N E. I should just put it in there. How about that? <laughs> a new being.com. I'll put that in there as well, as well as be sure and contact your state rep for House Bill number 4954. Uh, Wisdom with Mama D. We'll, I hope you heard that about what that's really all about. And I'll let you explain that while I type this in here, Naima. Yes. Well, you know, we're, we're doing powerful things. We're creating new laws, new legislation. That's what it's all about. Of course, Mama D, she's been responsible for a lot of changes that have occurred. Uh, I think I first met her when she was getting 71st Street changed to Emmett Till Road in honor of uh, Emmett Till uh, working with Maybe Mamie Till Mobley, and that is a, a, a permanent fixture uh, on the streets of Chicago. A a tribute to a man who, a, a young man, a boy whose ending of life transformed the nation, kicking off a successful civil rights struggle and inspiring people to step forward and demand and achieve justice and righteousness. So we are grateful that Mama D is continuing to create groundbreaking actions and legislations that change laws and change conditions. This bill, HB 4954, 
is designed to have these memorable days on the official school calendars so all children can recognize and respect the works that have changed our society by those whose lives were exemplary in fighting for justice and remembering those struggles for racial equality, racial justice, and remembering the journey of this nation in transforming itself from a slave-holding, oppressive society to one in which those who had been brought here to be oppressed have risen to the position of president and vice president of the nation. So we are a successful people. So we're commemorating these days on the calendar, those significant days in our struggle so that we can teach what we have gone through and we can respect how far we have come so that we know that it is possible to transform the world with the power of your spirit, which is what we have done as a people. So the days of respect that Mama D has placed on the official school calendar according to this legislation will change the thinking of future generations. All the ethnicities, all the people, many don't know what happened. Many who are recent immigrants from various countries, they don't know the history of what happened in America. So they will learn about it in school. Their children will learn what happened in a way that gives them forever respect for those of African descent who survived and thrived after a horrendous period of enslavement. And it's a testimony to the power of the human spirit. So we thank you, Mama D, for these days that will commemorate some significant moments in history here in America. And we want our legislators to vote for this piece of legislation that puts those days on the official school calendar. And on that note, we are going to segue into tomorrow's show in which we will be joined by Jody Susan of Susan's Essentials right here on the Female Solution. And that is our new addition to the Female Solution, Jody Susan Self Sale Care. And I'm going to put that up because someone asked, Who, what is sale? Is that S E L L? No, sale. Yes. Like a cell phone, but no, the yes. sale within. Sale in your body. And the, the, the most the interesting thing about this, which really it even helps to empower us and transform our thinking about health, our cells regenerate. So, and you can, of course, you can see it all the time. You cut your finger, you know, a couple of days later, it's totally healed. You have, you know, new cells that are reproducing all the time. So we really are not supposed to age ever. Mm -hmm. You, you, our bodies are, will live and we can be comfortable 120 years. And there are some people on the earth that are, you know, have, have achieved 120 years of age. And usually they're, you know, still vibrant. We're not talking about old, broke down on a wheelchair, amputations of everything. We're talking about vibrant living, looking just like this right now at the age of 120. Mm. Because if you give your cells the right energy, the right nutrients, the right care, you can live to be youthful to the age of 120 years old. Well, and Tyson must have did something right because she was 96 and she didn't yes, do nothing. I mean, she was, and it's funny because you see a picture of her as, as the character, Miss Jane Pittman, and all these wrinkles and everything. But then you see how she really looked at 96. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, wow. Now, this is really how you look when you're when you're an elder. But if you don't know, if you've lived a hard life and a lot of trauma, that's what creates wrinkles. And we need to know this. It's the emotional trauma that creates wrinkles. Because they literally are etched into your face. If you frown a lot, all these things that you go through, they have a physical expression in your body. So that's what breaks you down. That's what makes you age. And if you're able to let go of anger, which is why forgiveness is so powerful. 
Mm-hmm. If you're able to forgive, then you let go of that negative energy that's aging you and causing your cells not to reproduce, causing them to die and not regenerate. It's our thoughts that create the aging process. It's, the, it's our thoughts that create the disease and all of the things that we suffer from. So if we can change the way we think and we can forgive those and overlook people who say things and all of that, if we can let that go, then we help our bodies maintain that energy that helps our cells reproduce and continue to regenerate life. And then, of course, if we're eating live food and not dead food, not corpses, sorry, meat eaters. I mean, you're eating an animal corpse. And it's usually... And we got aches and pains in your body and got headache and heartache and trouble, yeah. all that good stuff. Dead flesh. So if you learn how to take care of yourself, then rather than you have to spend a whole mon- bunch of money for insurance so that the, the hospital will take care of you, and if you don't have insurance, then they don't take care of you. I mean, to not get wrapped up in that stress of, I don't have money, I don't have insurance, I need to go to the hospital, I got all these pains, I'm suffering, I'm suffering. By the time I get to the hospital, they tell me I'm at stage four cancer, you know, all of that. If we would just know how to take care of the cells in our body so that they can properly regenerate life, then we never have to worry about being sick or aging. Something else also, Dolores Cannon, who is a past life regression therapist, said, when you're doing the thing you're supposed to do, you don't get sick. Meaning when you are satisfied with the work you're doing, when you know you're performing your life's purpose, the work that you do is the work that you are here to do on this planet. The reason for your being born, you are satisfied because your career is actually what your soul came to do. You are at inner peace and you don't get sick. Mm. It's the stress of doing a job that you hate around people that you don't want to be around that makes you sick. When people say, oh, you make me sick. That's literal. People make you sick. Yeah. But when you love what you do. You're not working. You're having fun every day. Right. So when you when you live a life where you know you're doing your purpose, you are in a state of inner peace and you don't get sick. So this is what she was saying about even wellness is that you have to do what you love for a living. And when you do what you love for a living, then the abundance comes to you because you value what you do and people value you and they pay you and you're living according to what you know that you should be doing because it's it's what you have chosen to contribute to the world, your creative energy. So whether it's entertainment, whether it's electronics, you know, whether it's working with your hands, building houses, uh, whether it is is a, a new cosmetic line you created, whatever it is you do, whether it's talking on the phone and, and, and being a, a counselor, whatever it is, you know in your soul, this is what you were born to do. This is why you are here and you love what you do and you're in a state of joy when you do it. And so you don't have a feeling of I'm going to work every day. I got to go to work. You get up, oh, I'm going to do my work today. And you're excited about it. And you never get sick because you're at peace. And this is why we have to let our children explore what it is that they want to become. And we have to allow them to dream and vision and support their vision for what they want to become because they know that they came here for a purpose. We can't allow a society to tell them, you can't be this, you can't be that. Well, I don't have the money to put you through school, so you can't be because I can't be because I'm not enough. We, can, we have to stop thinking limitation because that's what's making us sick. That's what's making them sick. That's what's making them angry. That's what's making them violent. So when we stop this cycle of disbelief and, and lack of, of vision, then we change everything. We change the world we have created. And that's exactly, <clears throat> excuse me. Yes. That is exactly what happened to uh, Cicely Tyson, she told the story of how, when, I believe it was the N double, no, the uh, uh, Emmy. She won an Emmy. Yes. And uh, it's posted on my blog on, on zeldaspeaks.wordpress.com. The part of the video that I showed this morning, but most of it is, well, it is on, it's on our YouTube channel. So go to the YouTube channel, Higher Learning TV Show. 
in that interview, she talked about how her mom told her as a child, mm -mm, baby, no, you ain't going acting on, on stage in front of people. What? Girl, you're going to get you a handmade job and do like everybody else. But when she went to get that Emmy, she said her mom told everybody after it was over with and she's around, you know, they're in the back and everybody's crowding around her mom, congratulating her. She said her mom says, see there, I told y'all my baby ever since she was a little bitty girl. That's all <laughs> she used to do was sing and her dance. And Cicely said she looked at her mama and said, what? This is when you tell it, <laughs> This is what Cicely Tyson said. Her mother said. Her mother told her she better get her a job washing clothes, working for white folks like everybody else do. What makes you think that you can be on stage? And here she is almost a hundred years later. Baby, when they say black don't crack, they were talking about <laughs> Cicely Tyson. So you could not tell that woman was 96 years old. Go to the YouTube and, uh, 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 channel, the Higher Learning TV show, youtube.com, Higher Learning TV show, and see that video. It's Wait, there. And then go, go to my um, WordPress, uh, zeldaspeaks.wordpress.com. It's a 17 minute video. Oh, oh yeah. I, I have seen that. And you know what's funny? Oprah Winfrey, she talks about her relationship with her mother as well, because, you know, her mother. Yeah, they did not get along at, at an early age. But then, of course, when she got to be the famous Oprah Winfrey, you mm -hmm. know, like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, I always knew she was going to be something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, but but these are the same people because her and she was Oprah was also raised by her grandmother to say, well, look, you know, right. find you some 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 good white people to work for. Because mm -hmm. And that's that that was all you can envision. That was going to be your life. Mm -hmm. You know, and and so nobody was thinking she was going to be this mega mogul that's influencing world politics and everything. Nobody saw that. Nope. But once she did it, like, oh, yeah, we knew she was going to be something special. Mm -hmm. and, and the same thing, you know, Tyler Perry went through the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, just not being told that he would be anything great. Mm -hmm. uh, and Matter of fact, Steve Harvey, I don't know if you ever saw his his, his uh, discussion about he had a teacher that when he said, when she was asking, what do you want to be? And he, and he said he wanted to be on TV. And she was like, why do you, mean you want to be on TV? That's so stupid. And just, just berated him like he did the dumbest thing in the world. Wow. Broke him down and sent a note home to his parents. And I gave him an assignment to say what he wanted to be. And he said he wanted to be on TV. You know, like, uh, that's just an impossible thing for you know, a little black boy. What's with you? Wow. And it, it so he said his father said, Well, you know, boy say he wanna be on TV. Let him let him say he wanna be on TV. So of course now years later you got Steve Harvey all over the TV, you got a movie mm -hmm. show, everything, big game shows, talk shows, radio, mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. And he said what he does every year is send that teacher a brand new TV set. Oh, wow. <laughs> Get out of here. Yes. Yes, so you know, so you can watch me. <laughs> I know that's right. In all shape, form, and fashion. Yes. That's power. So you think about how people will try to kill your dream. And many people have tried to kill our children's dreams. And when I when I look at young people who are out committing acts of violence, someone killed their dream. Mm. Someone made them believe they were nothing. And if you want something, you're going to have to take it by force and violence. Someone did that to them. Maybe could have been the parents they raised who didn't have their own vision. Could have been a teacher that didn't understand them. Could have been a neighbor that told them they were no good. But somebody killed their dream. And that's why they're out making nightmares for other people. So we have to give them their dreams back. We have to heal the hurt that we caused them and making them believe that they didn't have the power to create whatever it is that they need because they do. They can, they can build a car better than any car they can steal. They need to know that. And so we have to teach them that. And this is our task right now to undo that negative thinking that was forced upon us and made us feel unworthy and us feel incapable. 
we have to erase that in ourselves so that we can erase what was put upon our children that have made them self-destruct. And we can do it. We can do it, but it's got to be a habit. We have to continue yes. Yes. continuously repeat those things and, and constantly reinforce the idea. We are winning. We are winning. We are winning. And we can create anything. Because look at that book that says all the things we invented, mm -hmm. everything we're using. So they have to know they have that same power. And we have to keep telling them that. And then they will manifest it. And I love the fact the, that this generation of children, youth, young adults, because they're not children, they're doing things that we didn't even think about doing. Absolutely. They're doing it, they're doing it so well. So as we close yeah. today, be sure and get for Black History Month. This is the only book you ever need. <laughs> uh, as far as I'm concerned, for right now anyway, Black people invented everything. Can you say that with me? Black people invented everything and anybody who doubts that pick up the book and and we'll debate about it live on the air <laughs> well you know when you when you work you try to figure out how to make the work easier so it's always the people who do the work to, who come up with the inventions because mm -hmm. they figure, i cannot do this without having to work so hard mm -hmm. and that's what comes up with an, an idea mm -hmm. so yeah absolutely that's how it happens so well we certainly are grateful for everybody who stays with us and watches us every day of the week. And of course, we got our radio TV shows on The Female Solution. And we're developing and adding to our YouTube channel so, so that all of our hosts will have their daily shows featured. And of course, you got to keep watching the Higher Learning TV show and subscribe on YouTube because those are some fascinating shows and we are so excited to be coming to you every day of the week and definitely we got our new family member jody susan is gonna be teaching us all about self cell care so we can all live to be healthy and happy and 120 years old I know that's right. I want to look like Miss Cicely Tyson when I get 99. Absolutely, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> 9, 99, are you out of your mind? Yes, I am. Even if I have to do the, what do we call it? The higher learning hip roll. Higher learning hip roll, yes. <laughs> higher learning hip roll. Y'all don't know what the higher learning hip roll is? Go back and see. Was it last week's show, Naima? Last week, yeah. <laughs> the higher learning hip roll. So be it's sure to tune in. Get your computer and Start to feel that cramp, you know, and just mm -hmm. loosen up them hips with the higher mm -hmm. level. Now I got, now I got, because I'm in physical therapy, I got my string that I, that I, that helps me stretch. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do that now. So I want to thank you for joining me today. But I got to go do the higher learning hip roll, y'all. Make it a great day. Stay on purpose, stay empowered, and stay tuned tomorrow. So for self, sell, C E L L, care with Jody Susan right here on the Female Solution and Higher Learning TV Show. Oh, go and subscribe right now. Higher Learning TV Show. Peace. Bye-bye now. Shalom. Namaste. Hotel.